All right. So I'm Fritz, and I'm the leader of the uh, dealer, which is the logistics group for Black Hawk Engine. I'm going to go over some of the basic tips for combat engineering. There exists no problem that cannot be resolved by correct application of high explosives. So we're on to the types of mines. The types of mines are the bounding mine, which it's a mine that jumps in the air, and it has crazy kill radius. It's mainly only dangerous to extremely light skinned vehicles, pretty much, which can be pierced by the mine and also infantry. It's scary to infantry. <laughs> it takes up a little more space to your inventory than a standard anti personnel mine, but it is much more dangerous. And these things are terrible for most diesel method people use. And then you have anti personnel mines, which they're a simple mine pretty much. They just have a little bit of TNT and they detonate to everything. They, you can carry a lot more than can uh, bounding mines. So pretty much you'd use these for uh, houses while you can use bounding mines for a lot more open spaces. And then uh, you got your anti-tank mines, which they only detonate to vehicles, but they hold a significant amount of TNT. So these are what you use to disable tanks. Well, these will disable tanks and flat out destroy most armored vehicles. And then you have your dual purpose mines, which they'll uh, pretty much incapacitate most vehicles and do a fair amount of damage to infantry. These are the most economical mine because they're somewhere in between an anti-tank mine and and an anti personnel mine. One of the biggest drawbacks to using anti tank mines is you can only carry a very few, like four or six. But with one of these, you can carry literally double that amount, which is an insane part. Alright, so on to uh, types of uh, road mining format. So, pretty much, this is the main format you'll use for most of your mining. You're going to be manually mining roads, most likely. So, you have your first contact mines, which are at the front here, these two mines. Uh, what will happen is the first vehicle will drive into them, blow these two up. And then, uh, well, that's just that then. And then the next vehicle uh, will come try to, uh, it'll probably avoid this area and go around into mines three or four, and much blowing them up. Or it'll drive straight. Uh, one of the two options. Uh, if it does that, it'll meet with these mines. That's the purpose of them. And then the, uh, obviously, center here to catch that. Mine six is uh, here to catch vehicles that uh, get past this mine here and drive straight. Or vehicles that re-merge onto the road. So pretty much uh, with the way you want to place these, you want to space these by 10 to 15 feet apart, and you want to space this maybe like 20 to 30 feet apart. So pretty much the reason, what's going to happen is these two mines are going to blow up at once, and that's going to ensure whatever the first vehicle is gets destroyed. So that'll either be the heaviest or the fastest or something like that. And then the next one will just catch whichever vehicle makes it through. So pretty much... Uh, you just want to make sure that none of these mines detonate one another. So if this one goes, this one will go, and that one will go. If you need extra space, you can also space these two mines apart uh, horizontally. And then these, same thing here, but you want to also give the uh, vehicles space, pretty much, to re-merge onto the road, and that's the purpose of that. So pretty much this is just a little uh, demonstration of what will happen. So first vehicle goes, vehicles go around, vehicle drives through, and then Either it'll either go through like that or it'll uh, remerge from the side. It's mainly there for remerging. So this is the anti-infantry road mining format. So uh, you want to mainly memorize this pattern here because you just flip it, flip it again, flip it, and just keep going on and on and on and on. Uh, you can re repeat it. It's a simple uh, thing. The one thing you definitely want to remember is do not mine the center of the road because infantry almost always do not cross that section. You're much more likely to get a... Uh, mind to detonate if it's on the side of the road. So generally just set a set a formation of four of these mines on the road and that will take care of a lot of infantry formations. So mining structures, this is pretty much where you're not mining roads. So doorway traps, these are the most common uh, go-to method to deny the entry of structure. So you just place these and the expected doors and you want to make sure that they're on the opposite side of where the enemy is entering from. So if they're entering from the outside then you want to place them on the inside somewhere that makes it harder to uh, get to. Use it on places like stairs, doorways, all that stuff. So you've got your diagonal trap mines also, which you just place these in the corner of the room. So one of the mines will be placed on one of the entrances, and the other will just be placed diagonally. So it just surprises the enemy pretty much, or we'll get them, uh, yeah. It's just the most common areas that don't interfere with one another generally. And then use uh, the mines for covering windows and cover. So pretty much you'll place them where you think the enemy will want to try to take cover from, or if they're going to enter a window, or if they're shooting out of it or something, do that. 
don't forget to utilize grass and make sure to use your own discretion when uh, setting out close to placing mines. If you place them close, it will be much harder to spot them, but there's a lot less of a chance they'll detonate. So, on to demolition. So, in armor, you'll want to utilize the uh, 75 gram TNT torches. They do not require a detonator, uh, and they can be carried in mats to detonate large amounts of other things. You can also use multiple to do the same damage as a uh, large charge, so if you want to destroy a building or some vehicles like TMPs. So pretty much the main use, uh, well, one of the main uses is wall and cover demolition. So if you uh, feel like you're being funneled into a choke point or you don't like how the things are going, you just blow up, uh, you can blow up things like walls, barbed wire, cover, fences, anything like that pretty much, and it'll just slide uh, do that. You don't really need to use more than one charge. So structure demolition is, uh, it's you just destroy a building. Like if you want to deny the enemy, uh, you said that building, like if you have a feeling you might get flanked or something and just don't have a need for a building, just destroy it using a couple charges, using the uh, amount of the list. And then another way to use it is distraction, so you can distract the player or AI pretty much, it'll think a threat is in a different direction, and it'll start to face that. So you want to use either a timed or you just remove the estimator. Timed is probably best for this kind of thing, but timed is not gold. So the next thing is marking hazards, and this is mainly done so that you can uh, let others know about the presence of minefields, both yours and the enemy, pretty much. So, standard way to do it is just, uh, well, the way I do it, at least, is using two red lines, pretty much. Uh, two red or orange lines uh, drawn around the hazard. You want to overestimate the area. You don't want it to underestimate, just in case someone wanders into the area. And then the next thing you want to do is uh, you want to mark the uh, hazard type. So if it's mines, barbed wire, explosive, that kind of thing. Um, some roadblock. Uh, and then you want to indicate, if it's a minefield, you want to indicate the types of mines. So for this one, I've indicated AT and bounding. And it's important that you do this so that the person uh, would know how to defuse it. And another thing to do is just to uh, indicate the uh, who the hazard would affect. And this is just for people who aren't defusing it. So you've got armor and infantry pretty much. So people will know, if, don't go into this zone if you're armor or infantry or you know what you're doing. And then pretty much, just, you also want to include a map marker to get your point across, just so no one does accidentally stumble into the field and realize it's not a minefield. So for clearing a minefield, you just want to do these basic steps. You pretty much want to identify the types of mines, and this is really important so you know which defusal method to use. So you don't accidentally set up a, well, if, if you try to treat a bounding mine like you treat an anti-personal mine, and you run over a car, and then all of a sudden you have a couple squad lights, then you screw it up. Same with the, if you use the EOD mine. But you want to identify the types of mines, like AP, bounding, uh, anti-tank, that kind of thing, tripwires. You want to mark it, pretty much, uh, mark the hazard, and then you want to execute one of the uh, following tasks. So one of the riskiest methods for defusal is uh, shooting the mine, which it's very risky because so many things could go wrong. You could blow up a vehicle, you could blow up a chain reaction of mines, you could set up a bounding mine without realizing it's a bounding mine. That kind of thing. And if you hit a bounding mine, then literally everything is screwed. Another thing to do is you could uh, run a mine over, which it's the second riskiest method, because there's still that chance that something's going to go wrong. If you run over a mine in a light vehicle, then you're going to be injured. If you uh, run over a mine that's a bounding mine by accident, then all of a sudden everyone's injured. It, it's just not a good thing, generally, unless you know what you're doing. And then you, the... Pretty much the uh, second safest method is to defuse mine, which works the best on anything that is in a uh, bounding mine. Well, it, it, uh, I'm wrong about that. It works the best on bounding mines. It's pretty much the go-to method for defusing bounding mines because every other method will cause the thing to jump up and detonate around, and that thing has a huge radius. As I said, 40 feet, 40 feet, 40 feet. Uh, pretty much, if you're defusing a bounding mine, though, one thing you do need to know is you need to go prone, pretty much, to uh, defuse. You can defuse from crouch. I have to correct that here. It's just something uh, you have to be aware of. And then the next one is the EOD bot, which is, it, it's pretty much no risk as long as you aren't dealing with a bounding mine. If you're dealing with a bounding mine, then even if the area is clear, it, it's still very risky because you could blow up something very important without knowing it. It's just, try not to. Uh, there's no risk to you. Pretty much the drawbacks of the uh, bot are you sacrifice your backpack, which would contain everything like your toolkits, your magazines, anything important like that. So sometimes it's not worth it, 
and all certificates. So yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Don't think I have any more. Alright then.